Hello there friends and welcome for today's BG3 guide we have a very fun and thematic build and it's all about bears that's right you'll get to have one two three four five six seven eight whole bears in your party at the same time and not just any bears but armored bears even for the ultimate bear mancy possible like any good bear your bears will be quite bulky and tanky with lots of hit points and most importantly great crowd control potential because of their unique honeyed paws ability that lets you both automatically disarm enemies by forcing them to drop their weapons and also even knocking enemies without weapons prone right to the ground for easy follow-up attacks and all of this without any resistance or saving throw whatsoever while the rest of your party members can easily handle enemies from afar with powerful sniping shots from either bows or dual wielded hand crossbows of course, while fully protected by your massive and furry wall of bears. So without further ado, let us get into our bear menser build and guide. First, let us cover the best party to achieve the ultimate bear mancy possible. Ideally, if you want to stack as many bears as possible, then you most likely want everyone to be a Beastmaster Ranger, because that's how you get dual bears per ally, for a total of 8. Ranger, of course, is a very solid class just by itself. You can excel at both melee and ranged attacks. Ideally ranged, because your bears are quite big and bulky, so you don't want to block them with your own melee characters. However, having 4 Beastmaster Rangers is a bit overkill and not really as efficient if you're planning on playing this character from the very start of the game, especially for Tactician and Honor Mode even. What I recommend you do is stay with 3 Ranger Beastmasters for up to 6 bears and then have the remaining character like Shadowheart be a Cleric. Having a cleric will make your bear party way more versatile and powerful because first, you'll get to highly increase the hit points of all allies including your bears and other summons from upcast variants of the 8th spell combined with Hero's Feast later on for even higher than 30 to 40 extra hit points. Second, through the aid of some gear like the Whispering Promise Spring and the Hell Rider or Reviving Hands gloves, whenever casting spells like Mass Healing Ward, you can immediately mass buff all of your party members, the bears included, with both Bless for higher to hit chance and even Blade Ward for half physical damage taken, which helps everyone tank and survive hits. On Tactician mode where enemies have higher AC, Bless alone is really helpful because your bears won't have very high to hit chance otherwise, unlike your normal characters. And well, I already have a light cleric tank guide you can follow to the side here. Third, through the use of gear like the luminous armor and also the luminous gloves, you can constantly debuff enemies with radiating orbs, which further reduces their attack potential, for more tanking of course. Especially useful to protect your bears, who don't have the best AC. Now that we know what the most balanced Pearmancer party is, let's finally get into our main Ranger build, as you'll have 3 or even 4 characters following the same guide. When it comes to race, it's the usual choices to be fair, but ideally for a ranged character, if you want to be a sniper ranger, one that has dark vision such as elf, and would elf also for higher movement, the same for half elf, while Giff Yankee can help you achieve higher skills, or even halfling for not missing whenever rolling a 1, or gnomes for more spell tanking potential, but you'll be so fast initiatives wise with your ranger bear beastmaster party that chances are you can easily handle all enemy spellcasters before they can act. For class of course we want ranger, but you can also go with a druid. That is, assuming you want to turn into a bear yourself, it's just that druid, well, won't get a bear pet, unlike rangers, so that's not double bears per ally. But if you want to play, let's say, with Helsing the druid, go for it. For favored enemy, you have a few options. 
Ranger Knight can be fun because it grants you proficiency with heavy armor that you wouldn't get otherwise, as this character can't really afford multiclassing, while Bounty Hunter can increase the power of your Ensnaring Strike ability. The other favorite enemies are mostly about what skills you want to focus in, because they all grant you proficiency in a different skill. So you can even mix and match the more Beastmaster Rangers you have with something different for multiple skills covered. For the Natural Explorer ability, however, all of your Beastmasters absolutely want Beast Tamer, which provides you with the Find Familiar spell. Ideally, you always want to summon the Raven pet. This way you have not only lots of bears, but lots of ravens. The ravens can fly and also automatically blind enemies, which makes them easier targets for the rest of your party to hit, including the bears. For your ability scores, I do prefer this type of character to be ranged, so you leave the front line to the bears and also your cleric tank. In which case, assign a plus 2 to dexterity for maximum range potential, although you can also go for dual wielded finessable melee weapons. Most importantly, it ensures you'll have super high initiative, something the bears are kinda lacking in. Now, out of your 3 or 4 bear masters, have one of them start with 17 dexterity, because as always, through the power up you get from the hag boss fight in Act 1 at the swamp area, you can increase it to 18. The remaining points will come from level up. For the other allies, because you can only apply this bonus to one party member, leave it at 16 instead. The remaining stats are actually up to you, but I wouldn't go lower than 12 constitution just for some safety when it comes to hit points, especially on tactician or honor mode. You can also start with around 14 wisdom, it's not that important for a ranger, it's mostly for the difficulty class of a few of your spells, including the ranged ones like Conjure Barrage but it can also help with a few skills. As far as the other stats, it's gonna depend on what skills you wanna specialize in. For example, if you are going with multiple Beastmaster Rangers, you can have one of them start with high charisma, just so you have an easy time making the charisma dialogue skill checks. And also pick a background like, let's say, Guild Artisan for insight and persuasion. Because you only need a single character for these skills, for the other Beastmaster Rangers, you can of course dump Charisma and go for let's say High Intelligence for the Intelligence Focus skills or High Strength for better carrying capacity. So be sure to split the secondary stats depending on how many Bear Master allies you have. As far as your other skills, you already have Perception depending on your race, like Elf, which is amazing, and you might as well pick the classic Ranger skills like Nature, survival and also investigation if needed, ideally for the character that has higher intelligence. For the second level you have access to your ranger spells. I already have a best spells guide you can check here, but to put it simply, at the very least one of your bear master rangers should go for the long strider spell. You can cast this an infinite amount of times out of battle to buff every single ally including your bears with higher movement speed. The other rangers don't really need it. Speak with animals can be fun for one character as well, just for flavor. But besides that, Fog Cloud is absolutely amazing early game to generate advantage on your ranged attacks if your character has the Dark Vision ability, either from a race that provides it for free, but later you can also get it from a spell as a ranger. Besides that, Hunter's Mark can increase your damage early, but if you are planning on dual wielding, as it costs a bonus action, chances are you just want to use it for an extra offhand attack instead. For the fighting style, well, all about archery, of course, or to weapon fighting if you want to go melee. Always with finessable weapons, of course. For more spells, the ones I mentioned before, and Snaring Strike costs a bonus action as well, so don't bother if dual wielding, the same for Hail of Thorns. And it's time to become a Beastmaster at last, which provides you with the first bear pet. I have already explained all the in-depth mechanics about the Beastmaster class in my main guide, you can check to the side here. But to put it simply, your pets will only scale with full Beastmaster level, so no multiclassing. And they'll receive a power up at levels 5, 8 and 11. 
Level 5 is the most important one because it's when your bears get the Honeyed Paw ability for knockdown and enemy disarming. Meanwhile, at level 11 is when your bear will get to summon a fellow bear ally to your side. So now you'll have two bears per Beastmaster party member. You won't get to directly control this extra bear, but it only has to attack anyways. For your first feat, you have two options as always. Alert for the highest initiative possible, and since everyone in this party, even if you go with my cleric build, or 3 and 4 rangers, will have high dexterity the highest possible, when combined with alert, every single one of your party members will always 100% of the time act before enemies, including even on honor mode. And the alpha strike, of course, is always amazing. On the other hand, even so early, you can already go for the sharpshooter feat, which will provide you with a massive boost to ranged damage, especially good if dual wielding. Now, something you can do is pick sharpshooter with only one of your beastmasters, the one you want to have the highest damage and attack potential possible, also the one that will get the best gear, and then get alert with the rest, while saving sharpshooter for when they reach level 8 instead. As by then, you'll have more ways of overcoming the attack debuff penalty. Anyways, level 5 means a second attack per action, always amazing, followed by a buff to your pets, as your proficiency bonus will be added to their AC and also damage rolls. And as far as your first, second level spell, if you are a race without dark vision, be sure to pick the actual spell as it doesn't require concentration and lasts until long rest, you can even buff other allies with this. Otherwise you can go for anything else you want. For level 6 and your second favorite enemy, as I mentioned before, try to specialize in different skills for each of your bear masters. For example, you can pick Mage Breaker for the True Strike cantrip and also Proficiency in Arcana for the Beast Master with highest intelligence. For the second Natural Explorer ability, however, just like Beast Tamer, it's the same for everyone. Wasteland Wanderer, Fire. As fire is the most commonly used enemy elemental damage type. If you are a tiefling, you already have this by default as a ratio, so pick something else, like poison or code. Any other second level spell, at level 7. Even something like enhanced leap can work for more movement, but you are ranged at heart. And for your level 8 feet, either alert or sharpshooter, depending on what you picked before. For level 9, we have our first level 3 spells. They are kind of poor for ranger, to be fair, besides lightning arrow and also conjure barrage. If you want some extra area of effect damage potential with your shots. But the enemies can save against them for half damage. That's why it helps you have some wisdom. For level 10 we have hiding plain sight, not that it matters much for a ranged character. Any other favored enemy you want, depending on skills. And I'd rather poison resistance, because enemies don't tend to use cold that much. But you can choose between either of them. Level 11 means our pets now have two entire attacks per action, very good. As the bears can disarm and knock down even more, followed by any level 3 spell. You might as well remain a beastmaster until level 12 for the extra feat, which I recommend you spend in ability improvement for maximum dexterity. Lastly, let's now cover gear for our bear master party. As I mentioned before, one of your Beastmasters, ideally the main character, should well hoard all the best gear for himself. Early on you can go with any helmet, but the warped headband of intellect can help in Act 1 if you want to make some intelligence skill checks, followed by the Covert Cow or Dark Justicia Helmet at the second chapter for higher critical chance. And later in Act 3, as usual, it's all about Saravox Horn Helmet for the same purpose. For the cloak slot, most of them are pretty poor, just go with Shade Slayer. You do have hiding plain sight after all. For armors, because this character has stacked dexterity to the max, go with any of the medium armors that have uncapped dexterity bonus and they start appearing from the second act onwards. As far as gloves, as early as act 1 you'll want the gloves of archery for higher to hit chance with ranged weapons, especially useful when combined with the sharpshooter feet to make up for the attack debuff, 
but for the second act you can also go for Dark Justice here for higher damage on hit. Followed by the Hell Dust Gloves at Act 3 for the same purpose, but even more damage. Boots don't matter, I just have the Disintegrating Nightwalkers as usual. For the Misty Step ability, which at the very least can teleport you to high ground, great for ranged characters. For the amulet, just a classic Broodmother's Revenge for as high damage as possible. Followed by the Risky Ring for maximum to hit chance and the Kalos Glow Ring for extra damage. But very early you can also go for the Cossack Band Ring as usual. As far as weapons, well, the classic package of the Knife of the Undermountain King followed by the Bloodthirst Blade for the highest critical boost possible and it does work with your ranged weapons. And speaking about that, Dual hand crossbows are ideal if you want to stack high damage, such as the Hellfire hand crossbow and also the Nether Misser or the Fire Stoker. Now what about the rest of your party, including the remaining Bear Master Rangers, for example Asterion and Gale here? Well, even though our best gear is stuck on our main character, the rest of your party members can still excel at even if they cover the same role. For example, for Asterion, well, you can give him leftovers such as the Covert Cowl. Don't forget you actually have three medium armors with uncapped dexterity bonus, starting with the Yuan T scale mail at the second chapter, followed by the Armor of Agility and the Unwanted Masterwork scale mail, both during Act 3. But of course, your Rangers can even equip heavy armor through the Ranger Knight feature, if you prefer. Besides that, you also have some extra damage boosters like the Caustic Band and the Strange Conduit Ring, which is great for a ranger because you always have spells to concentrate on. And the Amulet of Misty Step for extra teleportation. But even weapons-wise, you have some other options like, for example, the Infernal Rapier to summon a big old demon to help your bears destroy enemies and any shields you want for higher AC even when ranged. And as far as ranged weapons, even normal hand crossbows will be just fine, I mean, so long as they are plus one at least, because you'll have a lot of extra damage potential at this point. If, however, you run out of hand crossbows, although you can always buy them from the very first merchant at the Druid Grove, the smith there, Daemon, you can also have one of your bear masters go with bows or normal crossbows. For example, the Titan String Bow is amazing because it deals quite a lot of extra damage, you go to both your dexterity and strength modifiers on top of that, and you can further enhance it by having the same character equip, for example, the Club of Hill Giant Strength, to set your strength to 19, even if you started with 8. Plus, of course, leftover gear like the Dark Justice Your Helmet, the Legacy of the Master's Gloves, which also increases your attack and damage with ranged weapons, even some gear to provide you with more summons like the Crypt Lord Ring. So, although you won't have as high damage as the main Beastmaster of the pack, you'll still contribute just fine. And don't forget, if you went with a Cleric Tank, which I highly recommend you do, be sure to go with the Whispering Promise Ring followed by the Reviving Hands or Hell Rider Sprite earlier, also a Pyrrhus Crown, and the boots of Aiden Comfort to mass buff all of your friendly bears and party members, of course, when using mass healing ward and other healing spells. Well, alright, friends, so this was it for my ultimate bear mancer guide and build. I hope you'll have fun with it as it makes for a quite thematic, if not unique, run. If you found this guide useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member if you can. I truly appreciate your support, thank you for watching and see you next time friends!